the objective of what I'm going to share with you today is going to help you to determine um, your needs and wants. It's going to help you to, I'm going to share with you some project um, examples and stories. Um, I'm going to help you know how much to invest and um, I'm going to actually give you a budget worksheet uh, that you can use. Um, we'll probably have links in the uh, description that you can download those. And um, of course, um, what to expect as far as return on investment in today's market. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you some uh, common kitchen planning guidelines, um, just 10 basic ones. Um, and then we're going to talk about conceptualizing and then we're going to wrap up with how to choose a contractor. So I hope this will help you with your project as it has been with many. These needs and wants I'm going to be going through is actually um, a survey provided by the National Kitchen and Bath Association, by the way. All right, to kick this off, I'm going to share with you a little experience I had um, in the early days of my career. I helped out a client, uh, the Clarks, with a large-scale kitchen remodel. They first hired me to help them with just a dishwasher, and then they wanted a, a, a stool out of a brochure. But they had some interesting d dilemmas in their pro pro in the project. So first of all, this kitchen here as is shown, um, and I don't know that you'll see my mouse here, so I might have to describe to you, but um, <clears throat> on the left-hand side, you'll see that this kitchen space, um, they could not move those walls, okay? So what we ended up doing was we ended up coming up with a plan to kind of basically bring their kitchen into their dining area and almost, and, and kind of transitioning into the front room a little bit so that it could be much larger and spread out to serve their needs. Here's how the, the, the design or the layout looked. So you've got the kitchen on the upper right hand corner here. Um, we wrapped the wall. We actually took down that little return wall that was um, to the left of the fridge. We actually moved the fridge and we, uh, you know, over to by the dining room doors or the exterior doors onto the patio. Um, and we uh, and wrap the cabinets around the wall. Um, so here's how the final project turned out. What was important about this, those, though, was the diagnosis phase, which is what I'm going to teach you about here. In other words, um, yeah, the, the, the project turned out really nice, um, but we went through a pretty thorough diagnosis process to help them decide what was really needed for them, you know, how they cook. Um, and so forth. So we're going to jump right into that for you. And of course, the great thing since this is a video, you can come back to this anytime. Okay. So um, some of the things that you're going to want to, to evaluate as you um, figure out how to, to plan for your project, you're going to want to look at things um, that are shown on these forms. Okay. Um, I'll, I'm just going to jump to a highlight on each page. So it's easier for us to kind of um, zip through here. So um, <clears throat> notice here that it addresses who is in the household, okay? Um, are they right-handed or left-handed? What's their age, height, and do they have any physical limit, uh, limitations? Boy, I tell you what, if that's the only thing that we do for you in uh, planning, that's crucial in making sure that at least for you, for now, the kitchen is designed to meet your needs. Um, you get into, um, you know, into the space here, you... Uh, look at this here, the, the type of seating that's that's requested. That's number nine, right? Um, you know, are you wanting it uh, at the counter? What what type of counter height? How many, how many people are you wanting to sit there? Okay. Um, certainly other activities, number 12, um, that you might plan to do in the kitchen are helpful. Um, uh, you know, so, so just monitor, you know, take notes, um, fill this information out. Um, you can take screenshots if you want to, you can, <coughs> you can send me a request or I can put a link down below to get this, these forms. They're very, very helpful. Um, I'm really grateful. This is where I got certified by the way, through the National Kitchen and Bath Association. Um, it's been, um, I'm just about at the 30 year mark, um, uh, in this industry. And I'm so happy to share with you these, these tips and ideas. Cabinetry. This is going to be, um, things such as, you know, what type of construction do you want? You know, do you have, uh, what about your, your door uh, overlay, your cabinet door style overlay? Um, and what type of hardware? Okay. Those just make the process go a little faster when it's time to make the decisions. Soffits, very important if there's any soffits or if you're planning to put a soffit in your kitchen. Um, that affects things quite a bit in cabinets. Um, just the same thing as you're restricted on width for having to have fillers between walls. You have to accommodate for variations between floor and ceiling if you're going to go floor to soffit, so to say, or floor to ceiling for that matter, okay? 
Um, I'm not going to go through every item in here for you guys just for the sake of time, but you're welcome to um, obviously um, utilize all the information in here. And if you have questions about what you see in the form and why that's relevant to planning, um, you know, mention in the comments below and I will be um, happy to come in and, and give you feedback on why it might be important, the, you know, the, the material for your countertop or the thickness, things like that. Okay. This talks about your sink. Nowadays with farmhouse and apron front sinks, there that's an important factor that affects the cabinets and the countertops um, being um, designed or planned properly for, for the sink. Okay. Um, appliances. Um, a big factor of appliances, just like um, the, the sink I mentioned, you've got to plan the countertops the um the cabinetry most importantly around the appliances um it's uh you know haven't quite found any appliances that you can stretch or or uh you know cut um or and trim to meet the needs of the cabinets so it's just the opposite way around you have to plan the cabinets around those okay um so just make sure that you're talking about you know um who's who's primarily using um thinking about in the notes there who's using the appliance you know who cooks the most um uh anyway so it's going to go through all the appliances here um and then we're going to jump into flooring you know again if you have a preference now sometimes you think well what's the big deal i'm just covering the floor uh, then it's just a matter of color and texture well that's not necessarily the case the thickness of your flooring whether it floats or is fixed um, all those those things and, um, you know, a little bit with its um, durability are factors that you want to consider when you're planning your kitchen um, and not deal with after the fact. Um, windows and doors, if you're going to be dealing with windows and doors, okay. Um, construction related items. So this is where you're going to get involved in, with your contractor, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But your electrician, your plumber, your HVAC contractor, you know, your framing, if you're going to be doing any um, you know, an addition or again, a new, new construction, um, all matters that, that need to be considered. Um, you know, just on the framing one, I'll share with you just a really brief story. I've, or well, I'll call, share with you more like a couple situations I've had in the past. I've had situations where we've had uh, concrete walls that we've had to anchor to. Um, we've had steel, steel studs that we've had to plan for, which means the guys have to use different types of screws. Um, and then we've even had situations where we um, thought it was a two by six wall and it ended up being a two by eight wall. And so that actually reduced the space allotment in, inside the room. And sometimes these changes, by the way, in construction are made on a whim and then the plans are not updated and people are notified later. Uh, remodeling is especially ripe for these situations because um, you're doing a lot of planning um, and you're not seeing it until usually the products are ordered. Um, which, by the way, um, I do have another video in my series about, um, you know, um, some of the basic, some of the mistakes that people make in um, kitchen remodeling. But one of those big ones that I tell you to avoid is to not, do not tear out your kitchen uh, until you have um, almost all the products that you need for your project inside or on, on, on premises um, to make sure that everything's there and correct. So that your downtime is at the lowest um, possible space, space it can be at. So you don't want to be uh, to tear out and then measure and then order and then get things wrong and then wait again. And I've seen that happen. I've had a, seen a project that should have taken about 10 weeks, um, take about eight months. Um, and that was before COVID, by the way. So a lot is a, a lot of heartache can come from from not uh, planning properly. Um, existing construction details, um, important to, to be aware of, you know, what it says, the construction of the floor on number, um, 19, uh, or 29, sorry, I, I, uh, I'm not seeing that right. Yeah, that's 19, uh, slab or, um, frame, meaning is it on slab concrete or is there, uh, you know, floor joists down below? Will you, how easy will it be to get into the floor if you need to run electrical or plumbing or you know, um, do something to access that space or HVAC for that matter. Okay. Ventilation, ducting, um, existing construction details. Just pay close attention to your existing, um, windows and door placements. Okay. Let's jump into another story. Now, unfortunately in this particular, um, story, um, the Terry project, um, I did not get a picture of this before they tore it out. In fact, <laughs> this is a, a case study of, 
um, of what this is the one I shared with you that, that should have taken about 10 weeks, but it took about eight months. And this is because the cabinet provider told the client two myths in this industry. Um, so number one, he told them, you, uh, I can get you cabinets in two weeks. Number two, he says, tear everything out before I measure it. Um, those two things are not what you should be doing for, um, uh, for remodeling a kitchen. And, and that's exactly what happened. The client, the homeowner, um, the wife, she was very, very distraught, um, uh, at about six months into the project, sorry, six months without a kitchen. Um, when she called me and I, uh, I tell you that's, that's disheartening. I wish that wouldn't have happened. This is how the project ended up turning out. Um, this is a more of the mid, mid, mid career for me. Um, you know, so, uh, but you see, if we go back, let me just see if I go back and show you the before on that. So I cannot remember now where the fridge was to start with. You see, they have this, this small wall here. It looks to me like that they had a drop ceiling because you can see here where the drywall has been removed. So there's a drop ceiling, which was common in the seventies and eighties in homes. So then of course the drop ceiling was taken out. Cabinets were taken to the ceiling. That wall was removed. You know, they did an open access um view space uh, to share between the living and the kitchen area um she was just getting into um grandkids and wanted to be able to enjoy that interaction with them and that worked out great another project um now i'm sharing this with you because what you find as you go through the the uh, diagnosis phase and determining your needs and wants is that you'll you will make changes to your project no matter how much you had your project determined in advance now, by the way, if, if, you're a, if you're a homeowner, this is great. If you're a designer, hopefully, I bet you can still get some tips from this. If you're a certified designer, maybe this is just going to enhance some things you already know. Um, but, um, but either way, I found that most people in most situations, um, when they think they have the plans well-determined, by the time they've evaluated their needs and wants, they realize that, uh, that there's more changes that need to be made. So this project was over on a golf course. It was a condo. See how everything's white in here now. When when this client came and talked to me, he told me he wanted everything to stay white. He wanted it to be stark and sterile. I, I I don't think he used the word sterile, but he wanted to be bright and cheerful. Well, I helped him understand that um, for for color sake only, that um, you need balance in order to appreciate the white. And when it, everything's white, then you can't um, you lose contrast and balance. And it doesn't look very good. And so that's kind of pretty much what the case was here. You'll see here that the, this one does also have a drop ceiling. This is an old 70s or 80s um, house. Um, you know, he did not want the over the range microwave. He wanted to uh, uh, remove this wall or that may have been part of what my recommendation was. Let me just pull and show you the design. So here was the design. There's the, the post um, that we removed. We actually went to recommended concrete countertops. Um, he wanted seating inside the kitchen, which he did not have before, if you might recall. So there was no seating in here, but he wanted one and he still wanted to have his TV and this is an old TV, but he still wanted to have a TV stand option in there. Okay. So this is how the space turned out. So after taking the drop ceiling down now, uh, that, that channel above there, which we, um, did rope lighting in the rope lighting actually was not turned on at this point, which is unfortunate. But notice the lighting. I told him to make up for the difference in color with your, see how we brought in some terracotta colors in the floor. There was terracotta tiles, terracotta color in the concrete countertops and the backsplash detail. And then a bit of an orangish color painted cabinets in the open shelves and the cabinets to give some balance. Uh, we got rid of them over the range microwave, um, you know, and give them a raised counter here with no vertical support and did a little bit of a cutout in his wall here and gave him seating as, as he was looking for. Um, the microwave was moved over as a raised microwave on this side, which I don't have a good photo for you right here to show you, but, but that's how it turned out. He loved it. Um, this is a, a few years later in my career, but, uh, but a nice project, uh, for a small kitchen. So, um, you know, you can do a lot with small kitchens, by the way. Some of my most trickiest and funnest projects have been small kitchens. Okay, the Taylor Kitchen. This project was out in kind of a, a very small rural area. Um, and, you know, notice how tight this space is. The fridge is in a really strange spot. They're right next to a diagonal counter. Um, they wanted this kitchen to be about three times as large. So basically, we had to plan to, to go into the... Um, 
the adjacent space and I just realized I do not have a uh, I don't have a excuse me I don't have a floor plan here for you I apologize I thought I had that one together but this is how the project how the space ended up turning out so you know we removed a bunch of walls where the space this is where the kitchen used to be again I don't know if you're seeing my my mouse I apologize but um, you know, kind of to the left of the island and where the cabinet star on the left hand side here of the picture is where the kitchen space used to be. We open it up. You see the beam that runs across. That's one way that we had to, we had to provide that for support um, based on the contractor's um, requirement or recommendation in order to get this space much larger and much more, um, you know, beneficial for this homeowner. All right. So how much should you invest in your kitchen? And wow, my color did not turn out good there. Sorry, I thought I, I uh, caught that. Um, very important question. So I've got this 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 budget um, worksheet. Um, you can take a screenshot of it. You can write it down. I, I, again, I'll, I'll put a link below that you can just get a copy of this this worksheet. I might even just give you the this Excel spreadsheet so it's automatically fillable. But you can use this this worksheet um, and. I'm telling you, this this worksheet works really well. I'll, I'll share with you one real brief experience I had with this, where we had a, a client with their home was worth about six hundred thousand. This is um, long before COVID, and so my recommendation, based on the fifteen percent of the value of the home, was about ninety thousand. Maybe it was about a five hundred fifty thousand dollars. Anyway, it was around eighty two, eighty five thousand, or something like, something like that, is what I recommended. Well, the husband said we are not spending that much money on a kitchen remodel. I said, okay, no problem. How much do you want to spend? He said. Um, he said, I, I don't want to spend any more than 60,000. So here's what I did in his case. I took and adjusted the budget where it says recommended total investment. Um, instead of it being, you know, 82,000, I changed it to 60,000 and adjusted all the percentages all the way down. I think it was automated on the, 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 the Google spreadsheet, but, um, but nonetheless, um, the pricing of everything adjusted appropriately. When we finalized, when we finalized the cabinets, um, he ended up spending as much as if it was 82,000. Well, that's what ended up happening pretty much with everything. They ended up um, spending, I think, just a couple thousand dollars less than the 82,000 that I had recommended initially. And I'm not saying it's right on the money. I'm just saying this is a really, really good budgeting tool. So let me kind of walk you through this really simply. So your home value, if, if you're going to remodel your entire kitchen, then the appropriate range is about 15% of the value of your home. Now, I saw something the other day where somebody said 20%. I would not spend 20% um, on the value of a home for a kitchen remodel unless that incorporates adjacent spaces such as a dining room, a living room, um, you know, perhaps an adjacent bathroom or laundry room. Um, I might incorporate that into that, that total somehow. But um, if I'm just dealing with the kitchen space only, I would stick with the 15%. So cabinets um, are close to one third of that cost. Now that's not just the product, that's the installation of the cabinets as well and the hardware and the accessories and the molding as you see um, mentioned there below uh, that line item. Labor um, is close to a third as well, not quite, about 30% here. And then the rest um, is fits within that remaining close to a third of the project. So the appliance is 11%, um, ca uh, countertops 10%. Now, since those two are together, I'm sorry, yeah, those two are together, I'm going to tell you that the places that people overspend the most is in appliances and countertops. They want the fanciest appliances, and they want um, to go for sure with kind of, you know, the, the most contemporary countertops. I'm not sure why those two things happen to grasp. Well, I know why appliances, but countertops, I'm not sure why that always has been one that people lean towards spinning um, more on than is appropriate. Well, where do they usually end up sacrificing? You know, where the number one place is, is in the biggest budget line item, which is cabinets. And what is unfortunate about that is usually, if that's the case, when you are frustrated because you underinvested in your cabinets later on, you'll find yourself remodeling. But in order to remodel, to take out and replace your cabinets, you're basically remodeling the whole kitchen again. So be careful. My suggestion is to stay within 10% of any of these values um, in order to stay reasonable. I've had plenty of clients who spent way more than that. I've had plenty of clients who wanted to spend less than that and we've been able to get them there. So all of this, some of those tips are recommended here below. This is this budget worksheet was not uh, uh, conceived by me. 
Um, it was uh, by the Remodeling Magazine in collaboration with NKBA's Design Trends Survey updated and that I've used on, on over 1,500 projects easily, and I've consulted on probably another thousand of those that I've um, that I've you know given the information to to help people with their projects. I hope this helps you. Uh, by the way. Um, you, it's sometimes good to have a third party help you with this. If it's your own kitchen, um, you know, emotional spending is a real thing, right? Um, but when you have a third party to help you, sometimes they can kind of help keep that in check. Um, whether you're overspending or trying to be too frugal um, for the house, um, just get another perspective. Now, is it going to pay you dividends? Are you going to get a return on your investment? Very important consideration that everybody cares about. Well, here's this report is provided by remodeling.hw.net. Um, by the way, you can go and pull this report up today. This is uh, 2024 national averages. I'm just going to highlight a couple. Major kitchen remodel shows um, the recouped cost is, I'm sorry, minor kitchen remodel, forgive me, 96% return on investment. A major kitchen remodel, 49%. And then a uh, and that's mid range. And then an upscale is 38%. Sorry, that highlighter was a little bit thick. Let's talk about this for just a second. And I should have done a slide on this. Let's put it this way. Let's say that you've got a $750,000 home. That's probably maybe a hard number for me to do the, the math off. Let's say it's a $700,000 home. Okay. Um, so a $700,000 home, you know, if you're going to do a complete kitchen remodel, it might be it would be appropriate to plan about a hundred thousand dollars on that uh, remodel if I'm doing my math right thirty five thousand about a hundred thousand maybe hundred five thousand okay fifteen percent. But let's say that you decide not to do the remodel on that seven hundred thousand dollar home. In other words, in, in your neighborhood or in your market comparison um, homes within the vicinity, a home of your size and age would be worth and, and property size right around seven hundred thousand um, in market value. But people come looking through your, your home and see that your kitchen is dilapidated, poorly designed, or, um, or, 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 you know, or dated. Um, if that's the case, they might start offering you fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 less than your asking price, knowing that they've got to remodel it. So even though maybe the market comparison might be $700,000, if you invest $100,000 into it, um, you know, now... Um, you might be able going to be able to get um, this. Let's say it's the major kitchen model mid range. Okay, so now you're going to get fifty percent of the value out of that out of that investment. So that hundred thousand dollars is going to give you fifty thousand dollar value out of that. I hope you're following me here. I'll re repeat it just in case I'm kind of just rambling on. But so now instead of a, a, a seven hundred thousand dollar asking price or um, closing price, maybe you're going to close at seven fifty. Well, now look at the difference between you know your six fifty. And you're 750, right? Or 630 or 640. You know, now you're either getting your return on your investment um, or you're, you're getting what you're asking for, or maybe just a little bit more than that. So don't be deceived by these numbers. If you're looking for a short term um, return on your investment, most of the time, most of the time it pays off. If you're looking for a long term return on your investment, then, then it, this kind of doesn't matter, right? If you're going to be in the home for 10 years, this is kind of irrelevant at that point. Um, then, so don't worry too much about it. Um, so I hope that helps. Let me just repeat that one more time. Instead of looking at the current maybe market value comparing with other homes, um, maybe not a thorough market analysis, just a, just a basic one, market comparison. Um, think about what would happen if they come in and you think I, I can get a home. We're going to ask this much. They're going to come in and, 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 and dig away from that because they're going to say that they need to remodel the kitchen. You need to look at what your real potential sell price will be compared to what you'll get out of it if you invest in a kitchen model and can ask more. So hopefully that helps. If you have more questions, dive, dive deep in the comments. I'll be happy to give you more comparisons or to type it in writing to help a little, a little bit more. Okay, basic kitchen planning guidelines. Um, I say here for most users, here's the reason why. I just spent time telling you, we haven't talked about prescription yet, but I just spent time telling you about the importance of diagnosis. Okay. So even though the diagnosis is important to help you design the kitchen for you, here's some basic kitchen planning guidelines that for, for most users ought to consider. So the work triangle needs to be between uh, four feet and nine feet per leg. That goes between the refrigerator's cooking surface and the sink. Um, 
So, and you always um, place that between the middle of the of those. And I think I've I've got um, some sketches here in a moment. I'll show you that will identify that landing spaces. Each of the work triangle appliances should maintain a minimum of twelve inches landing space on each side. Does that mean I've never done a kitchen where I've had a nine inch or a ten inch landing space on one side of an appliance? No, but um, do your very best to get at least twelve inches because it. You think about that. That's just a that's that's you're barely larger than a dinner plate, right? So you want to uh, uh, plan at least 12 inches. And I'm talking uh, at least on the opening side of the refrigerator. I'm talking about, um, you know, uh, both sides of the, your cooking um, appliance and both sides of your sink. Walkway clearance, a minimum of 36 inch of total clearance. Now, let me warn you about something here. And I do not have an example to show you um, because I just thought about this. But this is something that is common, commonly happens when Designs are being done by computer plans. When a computer plan is snapping the walkway space in a design, I'm trying to make sure you can see my fingers here, <laughs> in a design, oftentimes it's snapping the cabinet face. Well, it's not taking into account your doors and drawer fronts, and it's not taking into account the counter overhang or range, um, you know, front if it sticks out further, or fridge or a sink. Uh, maybe say if it's an apron front sink that sticks out past that. All of those things will restrict your walkway space and should be considered as you're planning, you know, your walkway space. Um, but for one single user, it's ideal to be somewhere between 42 and 48 inches. And um, and for multiple users, I recommend it's not mentioned on here, 48 to 54. OK, uh, microwave. Um, Always make sure that the bottom of the microwave is is below eye level of the shortest regular user. So yes, this um, pretty much eliminates over the range microwaves, okay? Counter height, um, good idea to have two different levels. Um, why? Because you have multiple, oftentimes you have multiple users or if there's one user, that one user is going to have different needs for those counters. So whether it be leaning on them for simply writing something down quick, um, eating a food preparation, uh, maybe rolling dough or, or, or you know, or, or cutting vegetables. And sometimes those things are better to have um, lower countertop placement for better leverage um, on your preparation uh, tasks. Time saving accessories. I don't know that I need to spend much time on that, but I usually recommend at least a couple of time saving accessories inside the cabinets, even on the most basic of kitchens. Seating dimensions. Um, you know, to be really frank, um, in my early days of my career, uh, 24 inches was sufficient. I would say now, I say plus because I would not go smaller than 24, but you might plan 27 inches, maybe 30 inches if maybe you have slightly wider hips in the family, <laughs> whatever it may be. But that's a very real factor, uh, just like, you know, airline seats and other, other factors we've got to deal with in today's, uh, today's world um, with, with how things adapt and change with us. Okay, door interference. No two appliances should, or sorry, no two appliance doors should interfere because sometimes you want to use both of those appliances at the same time, or two different users are using each of the appliances at the same time. You've all probably experienced that. Somebody wants to open the dishwasher and somebody else wants to open um, the oven door um, at the same time. Same thing with corner cabinets. That's a very real challenge that many of you have probably experienced as well. Make sure that you can use those doors or drawers. Safety, um, there's just some, some tips here. Yeah, I mean, nobody likes sharp corners. Um, and, um, you know, you, you're actually required now for GFCI outlets um, if you are uh, pulling a building permit, which you, you should in um, uh, kitchen models in most markets. Um, but they'll require you to follow code and, and will be inspected in order to, to proceed with the completion of the project. And then make sure your lighting is sufficient for the task areas, especially whether or not you have sufficient ambient light, whether or not you have nice accent lighting, those are more mood um, or for the general feel of the space. But for your cooking and your cleaning and other things, make sure that your task lighting that lights up those areas, excuse me, is, is uh, sufficient. All right, so we talked about the work triangle. Just one more emphasis on the work triangle. Make sure that you don't have any, be careful if you have a quarter of an island that gets in the way of that work triangle, you want to avoid that. Um, uh, we talked about landing spaces. I believe that covers them all. Oh, here's where I mentioned the 48 inch, if you have multi-cook. Multi 48, I'd say up to 54, okay? 
All right, um, let's see. I'm not covering every single detail, as you can tell, um, just because I realize this is running longer than I expected. But just so that you know, people know, that have done this workshop with me in the past, um, it's usually been a six-hour workshop. So we're going to be less than an hour today, easily, um, but it's just been six hours in the past. Uh, we usually do lunch, uh, and then I'm getting their feedback. I'm letting them draft or, or sketch up ideas uh, um, on what to do, which is what we're going to jump into here in just a moment. These are different shapes of, of kitchens that are very common. Um, single wall, oftentimes you'll find that in studio apartments. Galley kitchens also in maybe condos and smaller um, uh, homes. L-shaped all by themselves without an island, um, also smaller spaces. As you get into these others, you're usually in bigger spaces. Um, L-shaped with an island is not shown, but a very, very popular um, layout. Uh, double L-shaped is a little bit unique. But uh, I have done a few of those and, and plenty of G-shaped kitchens. So if you have any questions with the, the, the layout shape of the kitchen or your particular shape of your kitchen, um, you know, feel free to, to drop something in the comments and I'll be happy to um, respond to that. Okay, here's where I go into a different mode um, to help you. And this is, if you want to dig into this deep and have a lot of fun with this, um, I forgot to put notes on here. I was going to put a note on here that, when I talk conceptual sketches, now I'm taking all the information from the survey questions of my discovering my needs and wants or, or your needs and wants and starting to formulate uh, concepts on how to use a space to meet those needs. Now, by the way, almost nobody can get 100% of their, their wants and priorities out of a kitchen remodel. So I will tell you, list out your priorities. Some of those come out in that needs and wants. Sometimes they don't put them in notes and um, focus um, on, on the top um, handful of those. Usually, it, let's say you've got 15 priorities. You know, you won't be able to meet all 15. It's almost impossible to meet all 15. Um, but you might be able to meet six or seven of those. Um, uh, so just be realistic about your expectations there. And there's all kinds of reasons why. There's too many variables to explain right now. This is an old project I did. Not old, this is probably, eh, probably 15 years ago. Um, you see the triple soffits in here. And I don't show you the side of the kitchen over here where the triple, so, triple soffits did not continue. And I do not have the survey, though I did do a survey with this client, like I'm demonstrating with you. But I'll tell you some of the things they were wanting. They were trying to consider whether or not to open up this peninsula. But after we reviewed how they use the kitchen, realized that, that doesn't work. The fridge has no landing space. Um, and they realized that as well. Remember, for my, our, our uh, majority of users, I recommend landing space at least on the opening side of the fridge. Um, there's only a landing space on one side of the oven, and they have an over-the-range microwave. Obviously, it's dated colors um, and so forth um, at that time, and, and the one I'm going to show you is going to be a little bit newer. But So what I did was, and this is one of the tricks I'm going to teach you about, is when you're sketching, this is literally a sketch, what I will do is I will um, usually drop the walls and my, my architectural limitations on the space, um, on a computer plan. Now, maybe you can find some inexpensive or free plans online that you can just go in and put your walls in, or you can draw it on, on uh, graph paper, whatever works for you. From there, I will make multiple copies of that um, uh, uh, perimeter wall space, and then I'll begin my sketches. Okay, and I'll use a scale and a ruler. Um, sometimes I'll just do it literally by hand with concepts and then have it drawn on the computer to see how it really looks and whether or not my concepts were, were reasonable. In this case, I'm showing you ones that I used with a scale, a scale. Um, and so my scaling is pretty, pretty accurate. Okay. Let me talk to you about a couple things uh, I see in this one. And by the way, there's three, I'm going to flip through them real quick and then come back. See a, B and C completely different layouts. Okay. That one has an Island. That one has an Island. The other one had a peninsula. Notice that I've removed the fridge and put it over here on the left hand side. We've got the cook, cook top here. Um, the oven and microwave now has been moved against the wall. Yes, there's still no landing space on the right hand side, but after discussing with the homeowner, they don't use their, they didn't use their oven nearly as much as they use their cooktop, which is pretty common by the way. Um, but when I was telling you about landing space, I really mean it on both sides of your cooktop, your wall oven. It is nice to have that, but, um, at least one side is an absolute. Okay. Notice the walkway spaces. I've specified a 48 inch walkway space here, 36 here, but there's no working appliances, doors, or anything that, that uh, causes somebody to, to, to stop for a long period of time in this space. 
okay? There's only a seating for three here, so it's a little bit snug. Um, whereas in this one you see, we got seating for four. This is an island, still 36 inch walkway space. Pantry, oven, landing space next to the oven. We've got a cooktop here, landing space both sides, fridges, fridge. Now in this case here, you can do a French door fridge and that way, no matter which side you open the door, you have landing space on the, on the fridge, opening side of the fridge door, right? So that works out really good. Um, and then finally, this last concept here, again, pantry, cabinet, microwave oven unit, fridge over here instead of over here, um, you know, and just a hood here as well. Um, here's what we ended up doing with the project. So this is cherry, by the way, cherry's coming back in, in uh, big time in the industry. Cherry's a beautiful wood, but it has a lot of unique um, factors to it that people sometimes um, are not prepared for. This triple soffit was not here before. This, this soffit extends the wall. So on the left-hand side, in case my, my mouse isn't there showing you, um, the triple soffit over the fridge was extended as a part of our design and plans. So you see that now there's no longer a fridge on the right-hand side of that arched opening. By the way, that arched opening was widened because it was so small before. We have a pantry cabinet next to the wall of a micro. So what ends up happening oftentimes is you'll sketch up these three different concepts. You'll fall in love with the basic concept of one, but you might want to bring some elements of one of the other, um, you know, co concepts or conceptuals, you know, into your final plan. And that's very, very common. So don't stress about that if that you're one to... To worry too much about that and uh whoa that's kind of weird something went awry with my oh i know what i did uh forgive me here um i remember i copied or i was enhancing this in the sketch and i accidentally pasted it twice and that's why you see it twice here oh <laughs> forgive me that's kind of weird anyway um so this is one sketch l-shaped with <laughs> in the miniature version you see the island and the seating there and then um i think it's like some sort of a serving area here um, as one concept, concept number two, it's more of a G-shaped kitchen, right? Um, again, you've got um, a, a unique shaped island, 48 inch walkway space all the way around. Oh, a hutch. I did as a, a, a dividing room hutch is what the concept was there. Um, one thing I didn't like about this plan, this is access or walkway space coming in, but you've got this door opening really close to where people are walking in. I don't like that as much. I don't like interference, you know, in, the, in your planning. And then another one here again, where um, you've got two islands, one central island, one perimeter island, um, and a dividing wall um, planned in here, et cetera. Again, I'm not showing you the survey and their content of what caused me to make these recommendations. I'm just trying to give you some, some concepts about how to conceptualize after you've um, diagnosed your needs um, based on those factors. So this is what we ended up drawing. So they, instead of having that, that dividing um, hutch um, or cabinetry or wall in the middle of the room, they wanted it against the wall, which was fine. It gave some separation between the space or identification to the space. Um, you know, we had an L shaped with an, with an island, a slightly different island than what we initially drew. Um, and I don't believe I showed you a before of this space. Um, so this actually I think was new construction. That, that's right, this is new construction. So that's how the, the renderings looked. And, and that's how that worked out. Last one I'll show you, and then we'll jump into some suggestions for you and your sketches. So again, one option here, they wanted, I believe they wanted to be able to see each other while they sat down to eat rather than um, having a one line. I love that, by the way, big encouragement. If you want people to enjoy sitting in the kitchen, just like dining room tables, make it so that they can be wrapped around uh, viewing each other easier than having to kind of look down the, <laughs> look down the, the, the wall, so to say, of countertop space to, to look around each other, uh, people sitting next to them to see people that they want to talk to. Um, again, um, you know, I think this is a 48 inch walkway space, 48 inch walkway space, you know, wall ovens, you know, cooktop hood, secondary sink, computer nook. So all these came out of their, um, their needs and wants to make this project work for them. Notice again, the seating where they're, they're viewing each other, secondary sink, that must've been a primary thing in this one. I don't remember on that particular one why, but we have two sinks in the kitchen. Uh, you see the work triangle I mentioned earlier, the work triangle goes from the center of the sink, the cooking space, and the fridge. This is not the final plan, it was the concept, but the idea was there. You remember four foot is the minimum, four foot to nine feet, and these are six feet um, on those legs, okay? 
Uh, really interesting shape. By the way, I did a kitchen just like this. Um, sometime maybe I'll get a chance to show you that one. It, uh, I call it kind of the Star, Star Trek kitchen because it looked like a spaceship going into the kitchen. Um, so again, seating on perimeters to be able to see each other, an integrated table-like setup with the island, angled built-in um, refrigerator and oven um, kind of mirroring each other. Um, in this case, we only have a 42-inch walkway in some spots, 48-inch in others. Um, and I don't remember on this one how many cooks they have. Forgive me on that, that I don't recall. This is how um, we ended up planning out the space. Interesting to see, right? Um, that um, slightly different than all of them. And that might be what happens too sometimes is it just gets the, the, the creative juices flowing so that you can get an idea of how you want the project to be done. I promise you, your project will turn out much, much better if you do more than one design, initial design. And I would call those conceptuals, um, whether you do them by hand or you do them on the computer. Either way, help you figure out the, the basic layout, flow, landing spaces, et cetera, of how the space will be used. That's the uh, three-dimensional um, view or the per perspective view of how that one ended up turning out. So if this was a situation where I was in a, in a workshop with you, I would normally be having you then sketch up ideas. I would be reviewing those sketches or conceptuals with you and helping you to maybe clean them up or consider all the factors that helps make the kitchen a well-designed space. Um, I would be happy to let you send those to me. Put, you know, If you want to do that in your comments and get my perspective on those things, um, I'd be happy to give you my perspective as, as I am able. All right, the last part of this uh, video today. Um, some creative design ideas that are happening in today's kitchen that may be a good prescription for you. They may not. It all depends on your needs and wants um, to, to see if that, that, that fits. So number one, microwave drawers. Um, very popular, very useful in many cases. Um, but it does end up, some people don't like the cleaning aspect of bending down lower, and some don't like that it uses up your base cabinet storage space. But the microwave's, the microwave's got to go somewhere, so you got to figure out a place to put it. Um, so plan on that. Motion-activated cabinet lighting, um, eclectic furniture pieces, meaning you might have different sections of your kitchen where the it's kind of a... Uh, a self-identified hutch or a cooking area with, um, you know, uh, maybe it's its own color or a stain or a pink color. Uh, slab door style is very strong in today's kitchens. Uh, wide format drawers, large spaces islands, multiple cooking options in uh, ovens, sous vide, steam, so many different ways to cook. Um, concealed ventilation like behind um, stone or um, wood or uh, plaster. And then a sink workstation that has a lot of um, functional elements to the sink, such as cutting boards and, and uh, um, you know, colanders and uh, things like that. Okay, the last part of this, this um, is how to choose a contractor. My recommendations are to interview three to four contractors at the job site. Once you have the kitchens um, drawn up, those will be the initial kitchen plans, um, not finalized, because that contractor most likely is going to find things in your project that you need to reconsider in your finalizing of your plans. Sometimes it might work out just right to where they'll be able to go um, full steam ahead with what you've planned out. Make sure that they're licensed and insured. You can check that with the states. Um, sometimes they'll have their information on their business card or their truck or their website um, and view some of their work and have them um, tell you obstacles that they've overcome in order to create solutions, okay? You wanna hear their, th their theory and judgment calls on what they do to get uh, projects accomplished um, appropriately, okay? Um, don't sign their contract on the first time that you see it. You know, sleep on it, think about it, get other people's um, input, um, but uh, that way um, you're going into this relationship with your eyes wide open, so to say. You'll be living with this contractor, so to say, for um, probably months, and uh, dealing with the headaches that relate to that. And so you'll want to make sure that you feel like it's a good decision. All right, guys, I sure appreciate you watching. Uh, please, if you like this, especially if you watch this all the way to the end, <laughs> please take a second and, and, and click on that subscribe button. I have a lot of content, a lot more where this is coming from. I used to do a radio and television show years ago, and I've done lots of workshops and seminars and articles. I love sharing what, what I've learned, um, and I'll, I'll bring a whole lot more to the table. And then certainly if you have more questions, more comments, if you want more insight, please go ahead and jot it in the comments below, um, and I'll be happy to respond. I sure appreciate you watching. Take care.